Research shows that 76% of team members are disengaged in the workforce. Only one third actually feel like they want to be at work and are fully invested in their company. We also know that about 76% of individuals that leave a company leave due to poor leadership and management. So the question is, how do we make a change so that our leaders can empower, engage, and ultimately gain buy-in from their team? Hi everyone, my name is Natalina Nasserdine. and I'm the CEO and founder of Rise Up For You and welcome to Rise Up For You TV. My team and I work with corporations and leaders around the world to enhance company culture, team communication, emotional intelligence, and ultimately team performance and potential. Now, this is a question that we constantly get is what do I do about my leaders? They're amazing in their technical skill. They're awesome with sales. They're great with project management and technology. But when it comes to leading their team, they are just missing the mark. Does this sound familiar? Well, in today's video, I want to talk about the two must do's that, that you must do before you decide to put somebody into a leadership position. So I want you to think about this for yourself. Have you ever had that leader that was brilliant technically? Maybe they were phenomenal when it came to sales. They knew the infrastructure and they knew the business to the T, but when it came to engaging team members and creating encouragement and ultimately mentorship and coaching, they just fell flat. Maybe people left the company, there was a high turnover, and your company or you just didn't know what to do. Well, in today's world, we especially need to be conscious about who we're putting into leadership. It's no longer just about the technical skills. In fact, research shows that 75% of a person's success comes down to emotional and social intelligence. So how do we make sure that our leaders are actually the right people to lead? by asking ourselves and doing our due diligence around two very critical topics and must do's. Let's get into it. Number one, before promoting anybody into a leadership role, the question that must be asked is, do they want to be a leader? Do they want to coach people? Do they want to mentor people? Do they believe in people and their potential? All too often when we work with clients around the world and we're working with leaders that are struggling leading, I'll share a little secret with you. Half of them don't like people. Now, I know that's shocking and you might be watching this video and saying, no, I believe you because I've experienced it. There are quite a few team members that in fact, they don't want to work with people. They don't want to lead. They don't want to coach. They don't want to mentor, but they say yes to a leadership role because the salary is enticing and they want to make that extra money. But it's really important as an organization before we put anybody into a leadership role where they are managing people that we ask and do our due diligence around that key golden question. Do you want to coach, mentor, and guide people? And do you have the capacity to do so? And if the answer is no, or if the answer is I think so, or kind of, then they're not ready for a leadership role. In fact, you can potentially do more damage by putting somebody in a leadership role that doesn't wanna work with people or guide or encourage people. This is where a lack of engagement occurs, and this is where employee turnover can get pretty costly. In fact, for some companies, it's millions and millions of dollars worth of employee turnover, all because we didn't ask that key golden question. So here's something I want you to think about. If you have a team member that is brilliant in their technical skill, is there a way that we can take that skill and pass it on to the rest of the team members without giving them a leadership role that can potentially impact the company culture? For example, can they create tutorials? That can they create a process and write that down so the rest of the team can learn from them indirectly if coaching and mentorship and guiding people isn't something that they're excited about? So that's question number one. Now, step number two that we wanna be mindful of, that we wanna make sure we are cultivating before we put anybody into a leadership role is actual leadership coaching and training. Yes, here at Rise Up For You, we're big fans of this. If you're familiar with our community, you know we talk about it each and every day that development personally and professionally is critical. And unfortunately, when we grow up, when we go to K through 12 school, when we go to college or technical college or technical school, and we get our degrees, we are not specifically taught confidence, emotional intelligence, how to lead, how to coach people, how to have influential communication, all the soft skills that are crucial to your success. So when we put people in leadership titles or when we put them 
in charge of other team members. We just expect that they know how to lead. We think it's common sense to coach, manage, and mentor your team. But in fact, just like every other skill, it is something that needs to be taught, cultivated, and coached through. So before you dive, so before you decide to put somebody into a leadership role, make sure that they have the proper training and development and that they are being set up for success. Because here's the thing, if you put somebody in a leadership role and you don't provide them with the skills needed, oftentimes they can get discouraged. Why? Because their team maybe gossips about them or their team loses respect for them or their team starts to disengage and the leader doesn't understand why. Well, that's because the leader hasn't built the skill to create camaraderie and engagement amongst their team. That doesn't mean they don't want to, that just means they don't know how and they're getting an energy back from their team that discourages them in their leadership. Again, in today's workplace, we cannot afford to lose top talent. And your leadership is gonna help make sure that we don't and that we keep the team buy-in and loyalty there. So the next time you're looking to promote somebody into a new position or to a leadership role where they have to manage any team member, even if it's just one, make sure that you're following these two steps. Again, step number one, asking the question, do you want to lead, manage, and do you believe in the potential of others? And step number two, getting them leadership training, coaching, and development before they step into that leadership role. Again, my name is Natalina Nasseri, and I'm the CEO and founder here at Rise Up For You. Welcome again to the Rise Up For You TV. And if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button right below so that you can gain access to our content each and every day. I'll see you next time.